Taste Buddies, the first ever Taste Buds live stream Woo! is upon us. May 10th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are coming to you live from the Taste Bud No Press Studios with special guests, special surprises, and an epic battle that will be unrivaled. It's 10 bucks. It's super cheap. You watch it live, and then you have a week to watch it on video on demand. Uh, and you could finally vote live. You vote live in real time, so check it out, and we'll see you May 10th. Go to moment.co slash taste buds. We want to see you there. Folks, Joe DeRosa here. I got some live dates, a few dates to throw at you. You know how it goes. I never promised you a rose garden. Where and when? New York City, May 3rd. That's this week at the Crane Theater. That's the last of the residency run there, at least for now. Uh, May 4th and 5th, Pittsburgh. That's also this week. Doing I Never Promised You a Rose Garden out there. And then into September, because I'm taking the summer off, Avenal, New Jersey, the Avenal Performing Arts Center, September 16th. That's a Saturday. All tickets and showtimes available at joederosa.com. That's right. I got my own name.com now. Nothing's got gonna stop me. Joey Rose is also come through. We're open seven days a week at 1130 every day. Sandwiches, good times, and booze. Joey Rose is at YC.com. What's up, Taste Buddies? I am on the road with the Impractical Jokers. We are halfway through the tour, adding dates all the time. So check out ImpracticalJokersLive.com. Uh, coming up next, May 5th and 6th, we are in West Valley City, Utah, and Denver, Colorado. May 19th, 20, and 21, Arlington, Texas, the Moody Center in Austin, and Sugarland, Texas. June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, and Detroit at the Fox. June 15, 16, 17, Minneapolis, Des Moines, and Kansas City. And then rounding out the last posted dates right now in July, we're coming to Nashville to play the Grand Ole Opry House, uh, the Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, and two at the Stifle Theater in St. Louis. Everything available at ImpracticalJokersLive.com. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic, I'm talking. All right. Hey, folks, welcome to T-A-S-T-E, T -A -S -T -E, Buds. <laughs> <laughs> We're here today with a special guest, a very yes. special guest. We have today uh, the legendary DJ uh, and, and producer Prince Paul with us today. Wow, thank uh, you. For Shabby. us, uh, we are major fans, and this is a thrill to have you on. Uh, we know a lot of our audience. Our is it, like who? No, no, a lot of our audience, <laughs> is, audience is, 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 no, is in the same exact vein as us, so this is a big deal for us. I, I met you a while back, and we've become friends and uh, trying to get you on for a while. But to have you here, and even even just to to have a friendship with you, has has been amazing. Well, I, and it, I, I couldn't have said it any better. Better vice versa. Oh, thank you, you very much. And that's like, you know. Please. Oh, can I just say that my daughter's here? Layla. Yes. You know she. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Come over here for one second. Say hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There she is. <laughs> and she is the reason why I knew of the Impractical Joker show. Okay. Because I remember it came. I, what, what happened? Like it was, it was on TV, and I was like, she was like, oh, I love this show. And I'm like, I don't know, it looks kind of crazy to me. <laughs> and then we watched it, and, and from that point, I was hooked. Oh man! And so, it, it, so thanks to her, you know, uh, she opened my eyes. Well, That's awesome. I Listen to the youth that so much. Yeah. It's great. always someone always comes to me and says, tells me the family member that that got them into it, which is it's amazing. We um. We are. We don't know. Right now, season ten is airing. We just filmed it, and it's airing right now. We don't know if we're getting eleven, but if we do, I'd love to have you on. What? Yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah. In some and, and capacity, is, we'll figure and this it away. Is documented, right? Can yes. You, like, can not go back on it. <laughs> and with my luck, there will be no eleven. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> or you might I, know I, it already, I, and then have me set up. No, like, no, no. <laughs> I, I truly don't know, but but if we don't get it, I now will blame you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be wonderful yeah. to have you. I'm sure we can think of something real cool to do. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. See, I think the only problem with that show, I think if, if I have to do anything, like, joking-wise, as a black man, I will get arrested. <laughs> so so that, that's that's the only, like, bad thing. So you have to get no, me so in the you background. In I think what you'll do is you'll help us to get somebody else or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, you'll we won't throw you to the wolves. No, that's good. Yeah, that's you, like could, you could help stir the pot. Yeah, just as long as you got a good uh, lawyer team lawyered <laughs> up, then I, I will be fine. All right, no problem. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dia, it's so it's so cool to have you here. We were talking a little bit before we started, uh, but I'm a fan of 
Stetsasonic. I started with Stetsasonic, Ooh, and then into cool. De La, and then into well, Sally, right? Is the is the one I heard wow. first. Sally, the one the one that hooked me, and this was what I was going to tell you, and I wanted to wait till we were on camera to tell you. Uh, the one that hooked me, I was I think I was in the sixth grade when speaking of a girl named Susie. Oh, God, came I'm out. old. And <laughs> I might have been in seventh or eighth grade. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah thanks. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but no, when speaking of a girl named Susie came out, and uh, I remember I bought the the Stetsasonic no, Blood Sweat No Tears record because I because I had heard that song that. and No BS right. Allowed. I bought the cassette. Oh, wow. I used to buy, spend all my money, my allowance money on hip hop cassettes. That's all I bought, and I still have my collection on my wall, and I keep I still add to it. So anyway. Um, yeah, he's the guy that when you go to his apartment, it's like the wall of cassettes. Yeah. Wow. How many, yeah. How many bad ones you have in there? Uh, I got some bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks good. It does look good. <laughs> but it's mostly, it's, mostly, it's mostly classics. Like, I remember I went into a record store, and uh, I was on the road in, in Washington State, I think, and I went into a hip-hop record shop, and the dude... He had cassettes he was showing me, and then I go, well, what are all those? And he goes, well, these are the ones that are, like, pricey because they're more collectible. And I had every one Wow. Of them. And I was like, I, I was like, wow. I, I just knew, for some reason, I knew not to throw them away when I got the CDs. Because a lot of people, you go, ah, I got the CDs now. I don't need that. Yeah, for some reason out. with the cassettes, I just knew, like, no, just keep them. Anyway, I got the Blood, Sweat, No Tears record. <laughs> yeah, that's the wall. Why, that's the wall. Where, where, oh, wow. Where, where was, did you get this photo from? Me and Pimp were taking pictures it? for that's, this that's record I'm about like to put up. That's my wall, but not as, uh, not as sexy as yours. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Maybe it's the picture next to it, too, that kind of enhances it. The, uh, the Faith No More picture, the yellow in that, pops off of the cassettes without, without question, and then the comic books. Behind me, <laughs> there. We're, talking, we're talking about the the color and photo composition of the. Of the but anyway, <laughs> no, that's cool. So I bought the this the, and this used to happen, and you rem, you'll remember this. I bought the Blood, Sweat, No Tears record, and I I knew no BS allowed. But the song I really wanted it for was speaking of a girl named Susie, and then the version on the album was Did not the video version. <laughs> and Yo, I, I don't even know. Honestly, I've never listened to the cassette ever. So, dude, wow. I was mad because I was like. God. It was a different the version. Whole right? allowance. Yeah. I, like, oh. like, where's the version from so the video? So this is the reason we brought you here right? today. No, so, no. So it's like, well, let me see. What Clear is, the air. Uh, so <laughs> cut to appreciation. Cut to. Uh, I still love the album. Don't get me wrong. I still oh, love well, the album, hey, of course. Hey, 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 but hey, but hey, cut hey. to. I'm not joking, dude. Like f four years ago, I'm in my 40s. I'm in. A, I think it was Amoeba Records in L.A. Sure. And I'm looking at the cassettes. And I see it. That's a Sonic. Speaking of a girl named Susie Maxi single, unopened. And I like, I almost knocked somebody over because I was like, you couldn't, you couldn't get it. I remember the mind blowing uh, remix for DOC's mind blowing. And the video was the remix. And the album version was great, but it wasn't the remix. And I found the vinyl of the remix like 20 years later, 25 years later. So like finding things, but you've played such a big part of my collecting because the other one of the other things I bought was the Prince Among Thieves records. I sure. bought it twice because it went out of print. Wow. I bought, I have that on double, I have two CDs of that because I knew it went out of print and I saw a second one. I was like, I might as well buy it in case my first one breaks. My mind is blown. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be creepy. No, no, no. It's <laughs> but, you know, no, because you were saying, because your daughter was like, I don't get it, but all right. <laughs> no, you, you, know, you know what it is? Is I have a lot of those things in plastic, like in my, somewhere in the basement, somewhere. And I'm like, ah, oh, what do you have, do with do these you have that? Do you have like a room full of vinyls? I Man, I have a ton of vinyls. Man, I gave away a lot of vinyls. Yeah. And just like with the cassettes we spoke earlier, I was like, oh, man, I'll, I'll give you a ton of stuff. And you're going to see those CDs and um, those cassettes that you bought, and you're like, man. I could got it for free, <laughs> <laughs> or you could sell it. You know, no, so no, eBay, no, never, man. EBay yeah. cut, cut me in, cut me in on the. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I, I would, I would, I would, I would, I will gladly purchase anything. No, I'm, I, I'm a I huge can't. hip hop guy. I'll give it to you. Like dude. it's, it's, and the fact that it would be coming. Pass it to me. I get it your, to him. Out of your, <laughs> out of your collection would be. But I'm telling you, like the the that whole that whole Prince Among Thieves record. We used to listen to that. Me and my friend Pat, I had, a rap, I had a rap group for a few years when what? I was in college. Yeah. When I was in college. You rhymed? I did. I used oh, to. Oh, come on. Give us one rhyme. Ah! Oh, uh, my please, God. Please. You, oh I know, I know you remember God. something. I have oh to hear it. Oh, my God. What was your name? Your rap name? Oh! 
My name was. He also had a band named Salsa Windfall. I still do. I still do. I still do. I still have the band. Oh no! Now you heard his feelings. Like, oh, he still exists, and we still. My rap name was Example, which I think is a little corny. No, that's actually pretty. And I used to say EX. I used to call myself EX. I'm trying to. We we actually did this a couple weeks ago. I couldn't remember anything. Hold on a second. Oh, you uh, know it's right there. Don't try to run off that. <laughs> a rapper always remembers at least one rhyme. <laughs> Hold on, give me a second. My name is Joe, and I'm here to <laughs> say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, I think I remember. Hold on, hold on. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, half, half the time. Okay. Half, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Are you really gonna do that? I'm gonna try to remember it. Yeah. Can, can you all do like they do on all the talk shows and give them a clap? No, 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 no. Do, <laughs> please don't do that. <laughs> Yo, I, I would. Do, please. <laughs> Uh, please don't do that. Uh, uh, I'll, I, I'll, I'll go as far with this as I can remember. Half, half, okay, half, half the time, half the time, my motto was, half the time, my motto was kill the whole fucking bottle and stop making sense like Otto. I said it with Paco, gang of foes, you a gang of hoes like a brothel. You follow? Oh! <laughs> wow! That was one of my raps. Wow! <laughs> Let's no. examine every line. <laughs> <laughs> put it up on the screen and can we kind of bounce yeah, the ball, yeah. you know, kind of old school it. <laughs> I did not think I'd be doing this today. No, but that's cool. I mean, it's... Uh, Thanks. Honestly, Thank uh, you, man. Respectfully, I was really expecting it to be whack, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was. And I say respectfully. I was, too. Thank you, man. It was so. No, it, it, was, it, was the, it, it was cool. Like, Thank I was you, like, man. wow. Thank you, And man. that was way back when. That was that was I, when I was in college. We, me and my friend uh, Pat Knowles, had a rap group, and we Let's give a shout out to Pat Knowles. Pat Knowles, shouts out to Pat what Knowles. What was the name of the group? Though? Stevie and the Example. He was MC Stevie, ah! and I was the Example. Why was he MC Stevie? Because he wanted to. He said to me one day when we were doing it, we 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 were going by different names. And he said to me one day, he goes, I want to be MC Stevie. And I said, what? <laughs> now, you got to remember, we were way into Cool Keith. That was one of the oh, other cool reasons Keith. I was so yeah, excited man. about the Prince of Monk Thieves album. Because that was when Octagon and Dr. Doom yeah. and all. I lo we loved all the offbeat avant-garde stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we loved the Prince of Monk Thieves album. That was Dr. a very avant-garde record, in my opinion. Especially the turn where you have ever last played the corrupt oh, the white cop. cop. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, it just blew me away. Anyway, um... He said, I want to be MC Steven. I said, why? And he said, because I want to sample the thing in the deer hunter when they're playing Russian roulette. And he's got the gun to his head. And they're going, do it, Stevie. <laughs> and he goes, I want to drop that in before my verse. <laughs> wow. So he goes, do it, Stevie. Wow. And, uh, he, he put his whole he name. He made his whole name around that. <laughs> And we did shows for a while. We like, you know, we didn't like tour or anything, but we did shows. We had we bought I maxed out uh, all my, I, I like when I got out of college, they started sending you offers for credit cards yeah. for low limits, yeah. and I got some and I maxed them all out and got equipment and started producing beats and we we made a bunch of stuff, but it just never. And then I got into stand up and that was it. Wow. Like that was the end of it. I, I stand up started to move so quickly, I just forgot about about rapping. So I just, did, did you, you make know, like or music? Funny, did you rather. make funny rhymes? Did that lead to the stand up? Or was I all had serious, a group. And then you went to a, me Extreme. and my okay, so me and my friend Jim Pinkstone, shouts out to Jim. Shout out to Jim. We had a group after I started doing stand up. Mm -hmm. We did a thing called Deep, that was sex raps, and it what? was all oh, yes, it was right. all exaggerated sex raps. You know this. That was meant. Well, to be I know funny. that he did that. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Okay. Like, no one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said no one. <laughs> he told me. I've been, yeah. We've been friends. We put out one. <laughs> Nobody knows. We that. self. Released one album and then I think I heard after a while we pulled it. We were like, I don't know, this is because people didn't get. Wait, he goes the to the job. barter. Yeah. I'll give you those cassettes. Oh. You, give me, you give me a copy of D. Signed. You don't got to ask me twice. <laughs> but I I'll want it signed it. by you. And who's the other rapper? Jim. Jim. So oh. my name in Deep was Jay Beto, and Jim was uh, Jim was. Um, uh, uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Jesus Christ. Oh, Drill Jackson. We gave it, it was like porn <laughs> names, kind of. You Yo. know what I mean? <laughs> so, well, you got to get. And then I do two characters in Deep. I do my character and then I do another character named Bernard Valentine that's a different voice that people thought was a different person for a while. Wow. <laughs> Where did you get Bernard well, you Valentine? Get... I like that name. Yeah, we did. That's my favorite name so far. <laughs> what, what, what were some of your failed names? 
Failed names? Yeah, like what was the, what were some of the options you had that you when I was in, when I was in sixth grade, that was when I first started to rap, and my rap name was uh, Cracker Jack. <laughs> 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 That's mortifying. <laughs> but I used to get, I used to buy the maxi singles as a kid, and and and, and I'm sorry, the crack, crack that was a little, it was like eighth grade, ninth grade, because I remember I bought, I had, I made a tape in my uh, in my bedroom at my mom and dad's house. And I would rap over the instrumentals of. Uh, I would buy the maxi singles so I could rap sure. over the instrumentals. So I remember I had I had made a Cracker Jack tape, and the first song on it was called "Psycho's Path" because I wanted to be a gangster rapper so bad. And it was the scenario remix beat was wow. the beat, sure. and I sold that tape in my high school. There's people that have it somewhere. Really? People, oh, people yeah. paid you currency. People paid people. <laughs> People liked it. They were like, wow. "This is good, man." And I sold a bunch of them. How did you? How did you become Prince Paul? Yeah, please. Oh, uh, what to about the name? Yeah. yeah, because my name was DJ Paul, and my group said it was boring. <laughs> so <laughs> they told you. Yeah, they was like, "Ah, oh, nah, man, you gotta change that." So they gave me some weird name. It was like Kid Maestro, and some. I was like, uh, just. This long as I have my name in it, yeah. and people, you know, and I went to school with, oh, that's Paul. Yeah, you just get add whatever onto it, so yeah. it somehow became Prince Paul. It became Grand Wizard Prince Paul, and I said, please cut that out. And yeah. it just became Prince Paul, and that's so you're thanks to Stetsasonic. That was the Stetsasonic. Thing. Okay, you're one of the original guys, which is interesting. That story. You're one of the original guys because I never saw a rapper just use his name regular, and I might have. There might have. It might have happened. Keith Murray was the first guy where I was oh, like, "Oh, he used this regular his government I was like, he name." He just has his regular yeah. name, but you actually were the first guy, one of the first guys to do that. You're like, "I'm just going to be DJ Paul," and they're like, "No, no, no, you got to flash it up a little bit." Well, you know, I mean, there was other guys that used their name, but yeah. you know, uh, yeah, like I said, I had no choice. You know, I, I mean, it was DJ Paul. I think before that, uh, I don't know where, oh, here goes a funny name for you. My very first DJ name. Was DJ Ever Ready, like the battery. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. See, I got a smile. I was like, yeah, I got one on you now. <laughs> Cracker Jack. Gotcha. <laughs> Let's and do that, a record. <laughs> Cracker Jack and DJ Ever Ready. Yo, we, we, we do it now, man. <laughs> oh, Ever my Ready God. Was, it's not, it was its own thing, right? It doesn't exist anymore. Ever Ready was part of Doracell or no? No, Ever Ready. Ever Ready was its own it's thing. It's the silver batteries, isn't it? No, no yeah, it was Energizer. Doracell, ever ready, ever ready. What, ever ready doesn't exist anymore. I, I don't know, but that I haven't seen one of those in a while. Yeah, yeah see, I'm, I'm showing my age. Oh you know? yeah, you're right. It had the see, black cat. Yeah, remember the remember the 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 the, the nine volts. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a classic. Yo, I would like that shirt. That's a good thing for oh, a shirt. By the shirt. way, do you remember this? Do you remember that ever oh, ready nine was volt, like nine lives? The cat. They were like was? ever ready. That was like they held down like they they cornered the nine volts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They, they were cornered. Like, yeah, they were like Doracell's got the double A's. We got the nine volts. No, Doracell had the D's that were in the boombox. Yes, Doracell had the yes. D's. All right, so then who was cornering double A's back then? I think it might have been Ever Ready. Energizer? Yeah. All right, fair enough. Wow, see? I, so I, what... This, this really went left. <laughs> <laughs> what made I'm you... I'm just piecing all that together. It says nine lives on the yeah. thing. Wow, that is cool. I, I never, never really that. noticed that. That's pretty cool for a battery. That's a what good What made you... Because uh, you're... you're, you're, you're yeah, uh, you have a look at nine I, volt? Oh, oh yeah, get worse. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever do it? It's so gross. You, ever, you guys ever Horrible. do it? Did you ever buy tinfoil with the back of you? I have. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. It, nothing happens to me, though. <laughs> what made you, uh, because the thing, I, I, was, I, I was, I actually started to read up a little bit uh, on, on some of your, like, the, 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 the um, academic side of y your history or whatever, because I knew what I loved about you, and I knew I was a fan, but I was reading up on you, and it was, I think, Chuck D might have been the one that said you. He, he, he was like he was the first one that did that showed people they didn't have they could sample more than just James Brown. Yeah. So like, what made you explore that? Yeah, I mean, like you're, what, I mean that's you that's know? your claim. I mean, that's yeah. what everyone looks to you well, for is that you're the DJ that I mean, the sampling. It was like right. Is that? Yeah, it's the it's the gift and the curse, you know. Uh, beside the the lawsuits that followed it, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, I, I think just having a wide. Uh, palette of different music, you know, growing up with, you know, it, a lot of DJs, especially back then, hip hop guys would, it's whatever funk soul records. Yeah. Well, you know, the radio station back then played, I guess now they call it Yacht Rock. 
Yeah. Yeah. You Hell know, yeah. and so they play a little bit of everything. So we were all over the place, you yeah. know, what we listened to. And then the stuff that our families grew up with. For example, Dave, who had passed away, yeah. um, his family listened to country. Oh. Hence, Three Feet High and Rising. Sure. See, so yeah, and that mm-hmm. would—I mean, that was the, that the first day out, the first one you did. That was like the one that kicked kicked everything off in that yeah. style, right? I mean, yeah, like, it, it yeah. was—it was a lot of you know we all meshed what we grew up with. I remember I couldn't believe even as a kid because I was so so raising hell was my gateway record. Oh, that's a great album. So my favorite rap album of all time is Raising Hell, and that was my gateway album to this day. To this day, uh, it just changed the way I looked at music. It changed my life. Literally, ch- I, I always say, and I have a list somewhere. I go, there have been about thirty records in my lifetime that stopped time, and by that I mean like there were records that I literally would skip class to just so I could keep listening to the yeah, record. Yeah, that. And yeah, so like Ra- Ra- Raising Hell was the first, and it that's what brought me into hip hop. Um, but that opened the doors to me to to I liked the, I always liked the harder stuff. I loved Ice T. I loved gangster rap. So when I heard De La and you guys sampled Hall and Oates, I was like, "That's soft." Yeah. Even, no, no, I loved it. No, no gangster would listen. No, to that. no, no, no. As a, as a white kid from the suburbs, I was like. Oh, like our music, like white music is also <laughs> respected over here. Because I was like, I felt like we're so like corny. Like all white music is so corny compared to the stuff that I like because it's so edgy. So to hear it sampled and Hall and Oates, when you're a kid, I never just saw Hall and Oates as a soul Oates group. Oh, but yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, but they now that I'm older, but everyone gives them the, yeah. their props. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. That they would sample yeah, good music is good music. I mean, okay, let me ask you this, because you mentioned the 30 records. And I know this happened to me, and I'm sure it happened to you guys. You ever idolize a song or an artist, and then meet them, and then realize you don't like him as much, and the record kind of fades off with that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah I got one yeah. recently. <laughs> oh. oh. I think can I better mention. Can we beep it? Yeah, we could beep it. Say who? Oh, I, I I was a huge fan. Knew uh, first three albums, every word to every song, concerts, everything. It's a it's a contemporary artist right now. Uh, Please don't I say like Weird Al or somebody no, we no, want Leon to be cool. Bridges. Do you know Leon Bridges? <laughs> I have no, no idea. No, I know who Leon he is, Bridges. but I'm not. Yeah, he's amazing. But yeah. then I met him uh, in Nashville uh, at a like a pool party or something. Oh, that yeah. yeah. And uh, and then he was like, I, "No, you know what? It, this isn't on him. It's on me." But. But he uh, he wasn't as warm as I would have hoped. Him. <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, you want me to sign something for you? Get no, out he here, wasn't kid. even like that. Uh, but uh, I just was. I, I I didn't want to bother him. I think I told this story before. So if I'm repeating yeah. it, yeah. I just didn't want to bother him. Uh, but he was at this party and he was like, very. He was dressed to the nines. He was like stood out. I don't know if everyone knew him. I knew immediately. But then as the party went on, it was like at this place in Nashville called like the. It was like the um, the Motor Lodge or something. Yeah, yeah. They redid a whole roadside motor lodge into like a really cool spot and they have this pool and and he's the dj's playing he's at the end of it he's up there dancing alone like really dancing and there's like 30 people left there was 200 people there i was about to leave and i'm just like i i had this guy on repeat so i know just for myself like i don't really like to approach anybody or whatever i just feel because i'm also afraid of that and i just Went up to him and I was just like, I just want you to know, like I'm just a really huge fan and I've seen you in concert and, and a couple other things I was telling him. Uh, but he just kind of just stared at me, and then he <laughs> just and then he kind of just was like, "That's what's up." <laughs> he just went, "That's what's up," and he kind of turned like, and I was like, "All that's right, that's not bad. That's what's up." Is like he said, "That's you know, what's that's up," that's but cool. it was with his middle finger up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "This is what's up." No, he no, he just he just kind of like stared at me like that, and then he just <laughs> was like, and then he just said it, and I was like, "All right." And I, when I walked away, it's never been the same. Did you ever? Did, it's never <laughs> been the same since then. I love his music. I think he's so did, talented. Did you ever have the opposite happen though of what we're talking about? I did you ever meet a guy that you think his music sucks <laughs> and that he's so cool <laughs> and you go, they're pretty <laughs> good. And <he's> <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so much better. Yeah, yeah. That, that happened to me. I swear to God, it happened to me with a. Uh, I feel bad. I don't, I'm not trying to diss the guy, but I, not everybody with Sugar Ray. I met Mark McGrath. <laughs> <laughs> I made fun of Sugar Ray more than I've arguably made fun of any band. I met Mark McGrath at a radio station, and he was so nice. And I was like, you know, that sucks. That's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, do just, I do just want to fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the, uh, but I met, I told this, I won't retell the story. I met Ice-T, and Ice-T was, a, I absolutely idolized Ice-T. Oh, he's a great guy. He was awesome. And he said to me, I was at college, I was in college, I was about to graduate, and I was about to go out and try to become an artist. And he said to me, 
He goes, then do it. Go out there and bang some <laughs> fucking heads, man. And I was like, okay. I, I, and it was like that was like the best case scenario ever. I was like, I can't believe I met this guy that I idolized, and he said what I wanted him to say to me. Yeah, he's, you know? he's a great guy. Man. Yeah, yeah, he was nice. Nasty. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, you so you so you were favoring like crime, like the crime easy. You were favoring all that gangster stuff. I used to when I was I when it hit, God, it was amazing, right? But when then, I was eleven but Native years old, tongues is the is the ultimate. For me. When I was twelve years old, I used to I used to ask my mom if we could move to Compton because <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> you wouldn't be here today, man. <laughs> yeah, I loved, I loved, dude. When I heard, imagine Easy you walk around it, Compton like, spitting rhymes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that is hilarious. <laughs> I didn't. I just was like, please. Like, I, I was so obsessed with the West Coast. Easy does it. Like, like blew my head off. There like, was. Oh, that's like, a great album. It's amazing. What? It's amazing. There was. This, but I couldn't get enough of that stuff, man. But this, go, I'm sorry. Nate, let's talk about well, Native well, Tongues. Tongues. Jesus, Before I even go there, Nate, there yeah. was this show uh, done by um, uh, who did uh, the White Rapper show? Um, what? The production company that did the White Rapper Search. show. MC, no, Search. MC well, Search. Search hosted yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, I forget what they're called. They're, they're uh, anyway. Um, it's funny. I know him because I'm working with the guy now, Sasha Jenkins, who's a part of. Uh, oh man, uh, right, uh, it's it's at the tip of my tongue, man. They're gonna kill uh, me for not. They they, they have other. Uh, uh, yeah, because I was who, who on that. Who produced the White Rapper show? Is what I'm looking for. Um, it, it's gonna it's gonna bother me what you come up to, and I'm like, that's what it is. Ego trip. Ego oh, trip. Yeah. Yeah, great okay. books. Those yes. silly yes. books. I got the yeah. books. I got them. Yeah. You. Yeah. We. You. You know what's funny? This has got talk about like just the synergy. Right here, right now. You go, Ego Trip. Yes, great books. You go, they have great books. I remember saying to you, dude, you're the only other guy I know that has the Ego Trip top 10 hip hop list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's so I got a wild. lot of hip hop books. Yeah, yeah. It's so why? Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, but they had this white rapture. And then in one of the episodes, I remember he, he, he took them all up uh, to the Bronx and he went, and he went <laughs> yeah. to like, the, like, he went to like, you know, you know, so I think he, um, who did they go? He And they had him rap for it, like the, all the legendary MCs <laughs> and just watching it. It was like skin crawling, you know, like they did it to like, it was a lesson like, oh, see where it came from. See where the people who did it, you know, give them a little shine on the show and stuff like that. And But then they were like, uh, and then they just started rapping for him. I was like, oh man, because they weren't really good rappers either. Yeah. You know, like but there was, there was, a there that was, was okay. there was, she was great. There was like two, maybe three. She's white. Persia's white. Yeah. The uh, this they're John boys definitely. Oh right? wow. The, uh, Virginia, he's from. I remember. Um, that. Native tongues, like <laughs> it's such a it's such a wide. It's, a, it's there called you a go. wide. See, did you see him? Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Who? What happened? Oh yeah, that was a very young. Oh wait, you yeah. were on the show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know know you saying were on there the was show. this white rapper show. I I forgot that you were on it actually. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so you you literally know specifically what he. Yeah, this guy oh, was I a rapper. I've seen the whole uh, thing. You've you seen him all, yeah, yeah. From the inside out. Oh, was, so you was he good? A hundred proof? Was he any I, good? I, I hate to say I don't remember. Andy. I, 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 I have <laughs> like, no. I'm not. I no shade like, to anyone, but I, for me, he was not you, good. He you just, for me, it wasn't for me. Paul just, just made a face when he was rapping, raps. like it was okay. <laughs> On the screen, I mean. Um, so, it, it, actually, it, it, actually, what am I even saying? This is cr kind of cringy right now to, for them to be <laughs> rapping to you. It's just like you know, except for the people that Persia was good. Uh, Sully was had a little bit of a flaw. Hey, that's what's her name? That she's a comic. Is she really? Yeah, yeah, she's a comic. She's there. <laughs> she's there fucking around. She did comedy raps. Okay, that was her thing. She did comedy raps. I can't believe wow, that was a long time ago. Jesus, I can't believe my daughter doesn't even know that. She's like, <laughs> no. Oh man, I went. Yo, on, I, there's I, so I much random when, stuff I've done that she has no clue. I watched it when I was out, but then me and my buddy who loved it and watched the whole thing recently over the pandemic again. We're like, we found it on YouTube because they, you know, when over oh, the pandemic when everyone was doing like specialty Zoom things that yeah. never happened before, they had a uh, they had a reunion. Of the cast, and that made me go back on and watch every episode. Wow! Again. Yeah, yeah, it was entertaining. That's cringy man. for me, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> like, Do you? So wait a minute. I literally just did I the white rapper Bill? show for you. I just <laughs> 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 did. I did. I at least get past round one. You won. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and you didn't have to go to the Bronx. Oh, you know, I remember you like Ill, Ill Bill came that. on and like they, uh, people like <laughs> Ill Bill was on it. Yeah, and they were like digging into them, That's and then was like, wait, wait, <laughs> you don't have to go nuts with them. They're like, I picked them as contestants. Wait, Ill Bill was a contestant? No, 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 no. Oh, he just they came would have on. people come oh, on. Oh, and, oh okay. Yeah. There it um, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so weird seeing MC Search with hair like regular hair. Manager reached out. I recently found out and said he'd he'd want to come on as well. Oh, Which is I cool. would love that. Oh, dude. jokers, but it's okay. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I want to talk to you about C. When you were a kid, did someone read everybody poops to you? Let's just say many adults have forgotten the details of pooping anxiety, self-controlled constipation, and nervous diarrhea are conditions many adults experience throughout their lives. But at the end of the day, it's just poop. And <laughs> Seeds DS01 makes it easier to go. Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic supports healthy regularity, healthy motility, and ease of the evacuation. It's a symbiotic because it's both a prebiotic and a probiotic. This is also, it, there's also increasing research on the gut brain axis, which Seed is currently researching in partnership with Axial Therapeutics. Um, you know, honestly, I don't like to go to the restroom outside of my home. And so whenever I have to go and I'm not home, I get. All the things that they just listed. So this is about gut health and keeping your regular. It's uh, capsule in a capsule uh, safeguards viability through digestion for delivery of an average of 100% of the probiotic starting dose to your colon, babe. The outer capsule also serves as an elegant barrier to oxygen, moisture, and heat, so no refrigeration is necessary. Um, let's see what else we got here. What about heart health? Because it maintains blood cholesterol levels already in the normal range and supports healthy intestinal recycling of cholesterol and bile. Ugh, gross. Seed delivers DSO-1 daily symbiotic to you monthly in sustainable packaging with a reusable glass jar that protects the probiotics inside and helps minimize plastic use and waste. Start a new healthy habit today. Visit seed.com slash taste buds and use code taste buds to redeem 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 daily symbiotic. That's seed.com slash taste buds and use the code taste buds. Hello Fresh! Oh, I love Hello Fresh. You're going to get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and, in my opinion, most important, affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Flavor is in full Bloom at HelloFresh. Enjoy the taste of spring with chef-crafted recipes featuring ripe seasonal ingredients delivered once again right to your door. When the spring sunshine is calling your name, don't call for takeout. Stop it. Get HelloFresh instead. The quick and easy meals make feeding the family a cinch without the high price tag so you can spend less time over that stove in that kitchen and more time out enjoying the sunny rays and the beautiful breezes of the season. No worries if you're not a pro in the kitchen. HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. Uh, I use HelloFresh. I enjoy HelloFresh. I love HelloFresh for all of the reasons I have already stated. And you're a cook and you love it. Exactly. Because it's for people that are beginning and people that are experienced because you are a good what cook What I do already. like about it is, is if you're somebody who actually does cook and enjoys cooking, what you're making is still an outstanding. You're not going, well, this is like a beginner thing. You go, no, this is a solid meal. From soup to nuts, no pun intended. Sure. All right? Okay, anyway, go to HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16 and use that promo code TasteBuds16. Why? You're going to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. Again, HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16 and use code TasteBuds16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. It's <sighs> HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, babe. This, I've done so many things that there's a lot of things I don't remember. It, it, and, and I don't smoke, which is even more amazing. <laughs> and, but, yeah, there's, it, it's so many things. Like The audience has to realize I'm 56 <laughs> years old, and I started when I was, well, professionally when I was 16. I joined Step when I was 16, 17. So it's been a long time. Wow, road. man. Well, so that's like even the White Rapper Show. I'm looking like, wow, but dude, okay. Dude, that's also why you shouldn't, when you were saying earlier, you go, oh, you're making me feel old. It's like, dude, you were doing World tours at like eighteen, which you know is what very I mean? awkward. You were, when you you're were a kid, you know. <laughs> like you came out as a kid. I'm only ten years younger than you, man. You know, like you just you same. Yeah, I'm forty six as well. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, but see, you know what happens? But you look at a 36 year old, like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 30, yeah when you get my is, age. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I had to do, I think I might have told you, when I had to do press and I went on uh, Queen Latifah, she used to have a show or whatever, a daytime show. Or whatever. Oh, it was yeah, on a talk there? show, yeah. Yeah, I was on, I think, once or twice. And um, I got to meet her, and like, it, like before we started, and like she came over to say hello and everything. I was like, I just gotta say, I think oh, you're sexy. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> I always had a crush on her, but then I found out she wouldn't have had a crush on me ever. Uh, That's funny. She slaps and, you. And my sister's name is Dana. You know, um, as a, she, she, that was great seeing her at the. At the oh, at the at the at the, the daylight thing. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for that, by the way. Oh no, no, man. Yeah. Any any time. But I just I was up. like, I gotta tell you, I've been a fan of Native Tongues since the beginning. And she's like, what? And she's like, man, you would come up to me and say something about Native Tongues. Like she wasn't. I think you told me that me. story, and I didn't. And I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know this. I didn't know that Queen Latifah was in Native Tongues. I always associated Queen Latifah with Flavor Unit. Oh yeah, she was in both. Yeah. But I didn't know until you said that, and I was like, "Wait a minute, no!" And you were like, "No, I'm telling you." And then that, which was, which goes back to what I was going to say a minute ago. Native tongues is such a wide net; it's so expand. It was so expansive. I didn't know until recently the beat nuts were in native tongues. Yeah, it, it branches like, are they off. Adjacent? Yeah, yeah. It are they? In, off. Are they? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, you got Jungle Brothers. Anybody who's coming to the studio while. Any one of us recorded Shit. somehow becomes a part of it. Right, right. You know, you know it's like saying? a woo affiliate. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, not, not as loose as a woo affiliate. <laughs> That's kind of loose. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you are just by being Staten Island. Yeah. You know, automatically Wu Tang. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah, I mean, but we all, you know, if I borrowed a record from you, came around, or I get, get some advice, or we talk, it, you know, it's part of the creative process. So, what was the, my question is, is with Native Tongues, because it was such a fundamental. Uh, an instrumental uh, uh, crew in rap music, and I gotta be honest, it might be the first one I remember. Like, like a, which it's always I always thought it was a shame that comedians don't conglomerate in that way. You know what I mean? Because they're strengthened up, which is kind of like when we made the channel that our that this show and and the other show Hey Babe are on. It was kind of like that was the mindset. Was like, let's do what rappers do. Like, let's think of, do a thing together. Like, and give it a name and whatever. So my so anyway, my question is: is with Native Tongues, did you guys set out to create this this crew, uh, or was it just kind of like, yeah, you know, uh, well, we're doing this and Daylaws here now, people and that tribes here, so let's start right. same type of sounds. You know? I mean, you were instrumental. In yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to do a disservice and say the wrong thing, but as I as I remember it, Africa from the Jungle Brothers, it all really started with him, right? And him bringing yeah. on Q Tip and giving, I think he Q Tip is the tribe called um, tribe called Quest name, and then. De La Soul was fans of Jungle Brothers, and it all kind of, you know, it's all like, hey, we like the same stuff. We listen to the same thing, and it, it just organically happened. I don't think there was, like, a meeting at a table. It's like, hey, did, Native Tongue, you're going to be, you know, it just kind of happened. Did Black Sheep, because I remember the intro on the first all, Black all Sheep All Queens, record. right? Everybody's, oh, yeah, that's everybody's right. Queens, right? Huh? Everybody's Queens, Black Sheep too, yeah? Yeah, Black Sheep, I think. It's funny, I just, Dre. Spoke, I just spoke to Drez, and he, Drez. he, he lived, um, he was in the Bronx, and I think he lived down south as well for a minute. Yeah, he was up in the Bronx. Because I, I told him anytime I went to a party and anybody wanted to ride home, I told him I lived in the Bronx because nobody lived in the Bronx. <laughs> so I would have to get anybody to ride home. <laughs> They're like, man, man you, you going back imagine? home? I was like, yeah, I'm going to the Bronx. I go, oh, all right, that's good. I can't <laughs> believe that. I, I just can't believe you, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just can't believe you. What, that I need to people you, ride you, home from the Bronx? <laughs> I mean, the, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> that is it's rude. It's just that it's wild to, <laughs> it's just wild. All of my favorite somewhere. music is attached to you. It's what, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 I hope it served you well. Yeah. <laughs> to this By the day, way, there's nothing jail, better so than that era to me. But nothing can compare to that era. It's, it's, oh, no, it's, it's not. the greatest era in hip hop. There are, in my opinion, there are ten. What I say are Titan producers that I'm like. These guys are the pillars of what this music is to me, at least. You're, you're right. I mean, you're you're one of them. Wow, man. it's just a, it's like, wild to be sitting here talking to you, and it's wild for me to be here. You don't understand. My, like I said, my daughter's sitting here. Look at her face. She's like, what? My dad, he's a corn. We're giving you bonus points right yeah. now. He's like, but by, he makes great eggs. By the way, <laughs> like she knows me on that level, you know. By the way, Black Sheep, 
same thing as the Stetsasonic tape. <laughs> I bought it for the choice is oh, yours. Oh, and that's the mix is not on no, there. It's now. on there, but it's on the end. Oh, yeah. it is. And I remember it, 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 I was so excited and it came on. Yeah. And I was Everyone's like, this like, is I, not I the goddamn I I version yeah. that I heard the video. And then I looked at the thing and I saw the very last track oh, was called Choice is Yours. Whatever version, yeah, 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 and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. "That better be the so friggin' when, video when version." When that thing <laughs> dropped, I was in, it was, I was in seventh or eighth grade. It must have been eighty nine when that when that came out. Wow, I'm old. Eighty nine. <laughs> that Jesus. blew the Choice doors. Choice yours is, I think, ninety ninety one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, eighth grade, I was nine. It was nineteen ninety. Yeah. Uh, that was like. If you went anywhere, like th that was the that was that, the one they turned like that was the that was the track that people put on that, like that turned like just amped everything oh, up. Like that, ah. yeah, yeah. That to me, the choice is yours. To and me, scenario you know. was the rap version of "Smells Like Teen Spirit," I and vice that. versa. I see the energy, yeah. Behind vice it. versa. It was the energy. It had like the un as soon as that intro baseline comes on. Same with Teen Spirit, the guitar. And it was one of the only songs where there was a there was a hip hop club that they had an underage night where you could go if you weren't eighteen and they would do it for high school kids and they would do it like when you had a day off from high school they would say oh we're gonna do underage night at, I forget the name of the place that was the only hip the only time I ever saw them play anything that wasn't hip hop was smells like Teen Spirit and all the hip hop kids were like head banging oh, to what? it oh what I still play my DJ sets everybody goes ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and Choice Yours was the same thing yeah. Choice Yours I remember seeing Black Sheep. The week Jay Leno took over the Tonight Show, and I was like, "I'm seeing a crossover here with both music they, and that then, I wasn't seeing I, that was you this? were you weren't seeing as that." Now it's commonplace, but yeah. back then it was like the Black Sheep is on the Tonight yeah, Show. Yeah, <laughs> well, what was that? You was know, that like, follow up? Was it Strobe Light Honey? Is that the, was that them? Stro yeah, was, I think it yeah. was right. And they the sampled the SOS single. band, and I don't know. Yeah, take your time, right? Yeah. Had me thinking. I'm like, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. I like that one too. That was a, that. Was, like, I thought that was a good follow, up, but it didn't. It's a great song. It didn't hit, hit, hit his. Well, that, I mean, that other one's iconic, but yeah, there's no following that record. It's there's just, none. It is it's like it it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It was. It was huge, man. It so was huge. So right. octopus. <laughs> yeah, That's All a right. good segue. We got a battle to do. Uh, uh, all right, taste buddies. We're doing uh, today. We're doing octopus versus oysters. Uh, Paul, our special guest, hates both, <laughs> so he's going to moderate. Sal actually yeah. really likes oysters. I really like octopus. I have a feeling that octopus is going to take the the loss in this one. I, I folks, let's talk about our sponsor, Game Time. GameTime.co. Have you ever been stressed about buying tickets? All the time. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to go to an event, and then you want to get the tickets to the event, and getting the tickets to the dang event ruins the event? Well, I'm always trying to hunt down the best price, last yeah. minute. I don't know if I should wait. I don't, know, yeah. I don't know if I'm paying too much. So, and you sound stressed now, quite frankly. I do when it comes to people I uh, want to see, I stress. Point blank. <sighs> Was that a shot at me? Oh, no. How I'm talking about when you. I want to go to I'm a show. I'm talking about I want to go to a show with you. You're talking. Okay. Let's get back on course yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Listen, here's the thing, people. Buying tickets should not be stressful. It should not be stressful. It should be easy so you can get to the event and enjoy the event because that's what the event is all about. And Game okay? Time has killer last-minute tickets. And yes. the best price guarantee so you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped on the fun you'll have, right? It's a place for last-minute tickets. Ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance like I do. Game time is deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Exclusive flash deals on tickets for not just concerts, comedy, theater, football, Sports, basketball, everything. baseball. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section or row for less, they will credit you 110% of the difference. And I like that they also throw in event cancellation protection. That's very, very helpful. So, anyway. Go to GameTime.co, okay, or get the GameTime app, create an account, and use code TASTEBUDS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code TASTEBUDS for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Snag the tickets without the stress with GameTime. You know, it's a tough one because oysters are also polarizing. It's All a right. texture thing, and I understand that. Oh, yeah. You were telling me, but we were talking earlier, it's like... Anything with like that weird type of 
Yeah, but can't you have oysters like served different ways? Right? Yeah, like, sure. Like, what are some of the ways you could have oyster? Oysters. I, I prefer them raw, but fried, and then I'm sure any which way, but loose in the middle of Rockefeller oysters. Yeah, which I've had, and in, uh, in, I get those always in, at Antoine's in New Orleans. What oysters is wait? What is Rockefeller again? It's like cr cream cheese. It, it's it's heavy. Is it's it, uh, yeah. They they had a bunch to it. It's got. How, how do you eat it? What do you mean? How do you eat it? <laughs> green is money. Uh, what, what, you guys don't know what you're eating. It's a green. Oh, it's got <laughs> hollandaise sauce. That's what it is. It's hollandaise sauce. Does it? Yeah, and I think, um, I think, uh, like, yeah, I was gonna. Well, I was gonna say. Parsley, I will say I didn't greener. eat either of these until much later in life. Sure. Probably what well, age? probably well into my like late th mid thirties or something like that. I wouldn't even look. Oysters look disgusting. Like where you peer pressure. Uh, just like, you know, brown and I think I probably was older friends. I think the like, oysters, because the way people shoot them and they just put a little bit of the, like, you know, a little bit of the accoutrement on there. You get a little hot sauce. You get a little of the uh, vinegar or whatever it is. I avoided uh, oysters for a long time as a kid because uh, I, I loved seafood as a kid. Yeah. I loved shrimp. We're not going to scream probably in this one, just so you know. <laughs> I, I warned him that sometimes we scream at each oh, other. No, it's, it's and fine. we did in the last ep, but I, I can't see us getting into a heated battle it's right like now. A dysfunctional I mean, household. <laughs> I mean, we can That's let okay. it rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should do the chant. Don't be off. Don't be alarmed by the chant. Ready? Okay, yeah. All right, here we go. It's time. <laughs> it's time to be a. -A no, no, commit to it. Don't uh, pull back. I'm Don't pull not. back. I'm not. Come on, ready? Yeah. It's time to be a T T L E butts. All right, here we go. You got. We got chance. Yeah, we got chance. What? Call response. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah, I'm He amped. gets a little embarrassed by them. No, don't no, be embarrassed. No, 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 I don't, I don't. I don't. It always takes a guest blind side. I think I, so I always explain it, and then he thinks I'm explaining it because whatever. I'm explaining it because. Oh, hurt. Why well, not? Feels like you're leaving you just, me. We just start screaming all of a sudden. Feels like, 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 like you're putting baby in a corner. Feels like you're putting baby in a corner. That's what? all. Feels like you're putting baby in a corner. Nah, sometimes. no one puts baby in a corner. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I loved seafood as a kid. I loved shrimp cocktail. So I loved cold seafood, uh, even. And I loved cocktail sauce. I loved from a very early age. Oysters, I held off from, not because I thought they looked gross. I j my grandfather showed it to me, and he was like, you don't chew it. And I was like, I don't understand eating a food you don't chew. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, the, the not chewing it is the reason I actually tried it, because it looked terrible to chew. But then people are like, oh, they're fun. You know, you got the lemon in that little cloth. You got the Tabasco sauce that makes you feel like a giant. I do and like the lemon like in the in the cloth. Yeah, I do like I know. it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, on yeah, chipped yeah. and shit, like chipped ice. It mm -hmm. comes out. And then, oh, this one's from Maryland. This one's from the, you know, this neighborhood. And, and then you, know, you throw it down, and then you... You get it's like you're getting all the other tastes as well. Like just the oyster in and of itself might taste a little bit like salty, but I was like, oh, this ain't bad. But I didn't learn until recently. I saw someone chewing one, a raw one. I was like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, you can chew them. I and chew. Like, people chew them, and I'm, I found out people chew them. I chew them. Yeah, so I, I chew them. But, but I like but, mussels and clams. So. And I will. And I and let me. You let probably me, don't like mussels or clams. No, this is no, I, this is all a one hundred and one for me. Like I, I I knew none of this. All I know is it looks like doo doo in a shell. <laughs> and, and I was like, and I'm not eating that. It looks like doo doo in a right. shell. Yeah, yeah, it's like doo doo in a shell. And I'm like, uh, you can have that. I will you know? say the one weird thing about these crustaceans is, and I <laughs> and I like all of them, right? I'd like all of them, but um, and I do like oysters. I've lost my taste for them in recent year, in the re last year or so. Kind of lost my taste for it. But I will say the weird well, well, thing. Why? They're okay. Nasty. So so a, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just excellent. I'll tell you why. Yeah, it, might, to yeah, it. it might be it might be because they're disgusting. <laughs> no, this no, is excellent uh, because I, I, I would never ate octopus and well. then I did and now I don't. So it's the same, I got the same thing going okay, on. Okay, so I lost my taste for oysters in, in, in more recently than not because there is the there's a brininess to oysters. Okay, and often. A better oyster. Some is, are more than that, though. Yeah, but but often a better oyster is considered brinier. Mm -hmm. Like if you go, like nine times out of ten, if you go, and I've done this a million times, you go to a happy hour, they go, we have dollar oysters, two dollar oysters. You get those oysters, they're flavor this. They're great. the brine is really what gives it flavor. Wait, now there's wait, degrees can I, can I, of that. What is briny? Briny, it's like a salt water flavor. It's oh, a salty flavor. But no, that's no, what that's called. Actually, salty is not accurate. It's a salt watery flavor. Right. Like it is, it's it's everything you don't want to taste when yeah. you look at an oyster. Yeah, I don't like, like too much brine myself. I know people that are huge oyster fans where they're like the brinier the better. I agree. I don't like too much. But even the 
limited amount of it. It just started to get to me after a while. And I, oysters are one of those things, man. You have a couple bad experiences, and I don't mean bad like they were like rotten or anything. I just mean like yeah, you get that one that goes sideways, and you're like, Ugh, and you're like, like, I'm never doing that again. That Wake was up unconscious it. the next morning. Yeah, <laughs> your, your pants yeah. are off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how bad does it get? Well, they're supposed to be an aphrodisiac, actually, right? I yes. mean, they well, are. <laughs> this is the one. This is what I was going to say. I want to tip my hat to the oyster. Oh, and I never said what's weird about the okay. What's weird about the crustaceans, the mussels, the uh, the, the the clams, and the oysters? You're eating the entire thing. It's one of the only foods where you're eating the entire being. See what I'm saying? Less the shell. Even a lobster, you're there's stuff you don't eat. There's stuff you discard. There's yeah. stuff you clean out. Crab, same thing. You are op- you are eating the entire organism of a clam when you eat it. Period. <laughs> that's just you are right. So that's a lot. When you start thinking yeah. about that, it's it haunts you a little. But I bit. love a good shuck. You know, it's fun. I've never shuck. shucked. They shuck it for yeah, you. Yeah, they sh- But I like when shucking is going about while I'm there. <laughs> you I, know, there's I, people there's that's their whole a- job. <laughs> that's their whole job in the restaurant is to shuck the oysters. I know that. And I yeah. love. I love. We had a kid who quit Joey Roses. To go shock oysters. Really? That's like something. How much a- did he hate working for me? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'd rather stand over a barrel of oysters. Joe has a, a bar in the Lower East Side that's a like a bar social club sandwich shop. It's yeah. very cool. It's Joey- fun. You should go down. In fact, really? the whole bar top is a uh, lacquered bar top and it's all New York hip hop. Wow. Uh, flyers and posters, a lot of them from my bedroom and, as and, a kid. And, and it's your restaurant? Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, this is where the barter comes in for those cassettes. So yes. I can, I can give you those. <laughs> Come down, dude. Give me some free, like, coupons or yeah, something. I'll give you a couple like, sandwiches. Yeah, I'll get you all stewed yeah, up with some yeah, whiskey. Yeah, Don't yeah, worry just, about just, it. It's just, on the arm. Yeah, just no oysters, <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm good. No, it's like Italian <laughs> subs. It's good, man. You, you come down anytime. You guys, please come down. But I, I love all the fanfare that is a raw bar. Like yes. when I'm at a restaurant yes. at a raw bar, like a lot of times it's by the water. It's nice. It's just, it's just always good vibes, and it's fun. And you see everything, especially when yes. they have the big displays or when you get a seafood tower. Nothing and like it comes a over tower. and everything's on ice. And a raw bar is just fun. And I think you know oysters are part of that experience. So I'm not like you know the world's biggest oyster fan, but I never thought I would like them, and I really do now. <laughs> octopus. Wait, I was gonna say one more thing about yeah. the oysters. I, t- I, t- I keep saying Please. this tip my hat thing. I want to tip my hat to the oyster. In my opinion, a grand slam date is you go to, like, a true oyster bar, like, speakeasy style with the bow ties and all that stuff and the vests, and you sit down with a lady and you have (laughs) oysters and martinis. I mean, that is... As Cooge would say, that is class, like all the way. <laughs> that's a great date. Wow, what kind of dates have you been on? <laughs> that's, that's, I never, that's, like I never, a, that's like a bad date to me. I know. I know. I know. I know. That's first base. That was, <laughs> that's no. still on the mound. That's, that's no, so I'm descriptive. I never like picked up a gal, went to a speakeasy, had a bunch of oysters. Oh, it was a ten dude, out of ten. You want to talk about? You're getting loose. First of all, you're eating an aphrodisiac. Second of all, you're drinking martinis. It's just. Yeah, it's no, just, it's it's, it's old, it's classic, it's fun. It's fun, man. Yeah, I it's fun. I'm not saying it's the whole night. I'll take that. That's that's a check for me in the oysters yeah, yeah, category. Yeah, yeah. All right. You yeah. know what I mean? Go ahead now with the octopus. Well, the octopus. Uh, so, yes. gr- like I said, didn't have any of these until late in life. I was a picky eater as a kid. Uh, you know, you look at an octopus and immediately everything inside you says... Not Nasty. for me, pass. Right? <laughs> so, especially the goddamn suction cups. Right? And so, never in my life would I have eaten an oyster. It took me a long time to eat, gal- to eat calamari, as you would say. Uh, but I, even still, well, I, that's only squid, though, calamari. I only sometimes eat the legs. I usually just eat the rings because there's something about those goddamn suction cups and all the legs. And, I ate, you know, I, Look, I, I was like, I, can't, I don't know if I could do this. It doesn't help that, you know, Jason and the Argonauts fought these goddamn things out in the sea. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it, like it, do- it doesn't have it's literally a sea, literally like the Kraken from like pirate stories is a yeah. giant octopus. Uh, and and, and, it and help. you know, if you're a foodie, if you, if you understand food and, and they lay the whole leg in the plate, and that's something, a thing of beauty to a lot of people. And I was always like, oh my God, like this is insane. I, and go ahead. the thing about octopus is, and I learned this, like, it can be amazing if, if if it's in the right hands. If, if the chef is amazing, but bad, bad octopus can be awful. Like you know, you said you could have a bad experience. So uh, I finally gave it octopus a go. is is a fine. You're on a tightrope preparing octopus. <laughs> you are. Okay, great. I've cooked it before. No, it's no, tough, I, dude. I imagine. I, I know it's, it's tough. It gets tough at the drop yes. of that. It is. It is. 
that's why when you have it done by a place that knows how to do it and you get it and they they present that piece on the plate and there's like the mango uh like jalapeno salsa or whatever with it and the you've got the lime and the cilantro pop and it cuts tender and it's blackened on the outside i mean dude it's like nice char forget so, it so here's one doing a rubik's it. cube so um so <laughs> i got grossed out of you i tried yeah, it yeah, I, 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 I tried it that, no, i had a really good restaurant i think del posto or something like that, and i really loved it and i then i had it for a while but then i saw like a terrible video of like these people taking an oct live octopus and like putting it on a grill and like holding it like it was oh, like flailing yeah, Jesus. and that that messed with me a little bit and then I started to read and apparently wait hold on, where'd you see this at it was like a video going around online it was a, <laughs> it was a they did it on it was, jokers it was one of the pranks <laughs> it, was, it was in my phone I recorded myself doing it um, it wasn't no, AI no. AI octopus <laughs> no but it was it was so sad no, pimp I don't want to watch it die come on yeah it's sad and then and then I read about it and apparently octopus are very very intelligent yes. beings very intelligent they are and then that weirded me out they are kind of going the way of the dodo on menus I believe for that reason Really? Like there, there is absolutely. I know. I know a restaurateur who was working on a, 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 his latest thing was going to be a seafood place, and he was saying to me like, he's like, we have to really be delicate if we're going to serve octopus because they're like, there's a cultural thing now where everybody. Oh, is I didn't like, know that. You know, they're really smart and whatever because they did it on like Black Mirror. Wait, they did. Wait, you know, hold, hold. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. There was this documentary. My octopus teacher. How, how, do, how do you know that they're smart though? Like, well, who who tested them? Like, what do you, how do you test an octopus? Like, well, they have they have their times tables yeah. down immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you never saw the right. picture of the octopus Times with eight, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I, I mean, see, okay, I okay. guess a scientist. Okay, <laughs> is, I don't know. Like, how do you so, test it? It's not us. Well, let's, let's read. Let's read. <laughs> Octopuses are extremely intelligent, with a larger brain for their body size than all animals except birds and mammals. Don't they, they have like eight brains? They are capable of high order cognitive behaviors, including tool use and problem solving, even figuring out how You're to right. unscrew a jar lid. And access food. Like, that's wild to me. And then you had another thing up there, uh, Pimp, right after, before that that was interesting about them. But I don't know, man. Like, that feels that feels a little... I mean, look. I, I mean, have to see that. We, you know, we, 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 we people eat, you know, we eat cows. I mean, I don't know if they open jars, but they... <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything's, you know, living, but I don't know. See, okay, right, here's an octopus. They have an octopus solving a puzzle. Let's see what happens. I mean, they these things are aliens, by the way. They're they're kind of cute in their own weird they're way. They're aliens. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, there's something cute's the wrong word. They're 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 gentle. They're, they they seem like gentle giants. Maybe you know they have mean? a maybe it's because they have a fluid yes motion. But they, they are look, scary they and look, disgusting. They look looking. like they'd be sweet. They look like they'd be. No, yeah, that looks like I would run the other you. way if that thing was walking down the street. <laughs> Knocks the and, air yeah, out of you. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, with oysters, it's oysters kinda... are more. I get it that oysters are more of a party kind of tray kind of thing. Meaning, like, you know, you, you, let's all get oysters for the table. It's one of those things. Sure. Everybody want oysters? Great. You sit there. You... No one goes round the octopus. Yeah. Right. I know. Well, I'm getting to the point. You know. Yeah. I can finish my own. Uh, my point is, is what are they called? Suction cups. But, but tentacles. Tentacles. Yeah. But when is. you get. No, but the tentacles are... You go to an Italian... You go to a nice Italian restaurant. You go to a nice Brazilian restaurant. You go to a nice Spanish restaurant. These... They have octopus on that menu, dude, and they make amazing. it in a way where it's like, dude, this is... Like, that's something... I would go back to the restaurant for that. Sure, sure. I would I go said, back I was that. never into them. Then I had it done right, and I was like, oh, it opened my eyes. But then I started to see that and read up on stuff, and then something just said, I don't want to eat this thing anymore. That's humane. Uh, see, a comment yeah. like this bothers me. Octopus resembles a plunger, rubbery suction cups, fine. And no matter how you cook it, it's overcooked. It's, That's not true. It's easy to overcook. Yeah. Tough choice. Oysters have the consistency of snot. And the only time I tried octopus, I puked. Yeah, that see? Said, That's what I'm talking about. the cleanse over booger eating. <laughs> <laughs> You'll if you had to... Now, you hate both, which uh, we established. Uh, yeah, I... With, I, I I mean, Tell us why you hate both, please. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier oysters is like doo doo in a shell. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. something I won't eat. I don't eat doo doo. Right. And the, uh, okay. That's a the first. The octopus. I w <laughs> it, it's just, you know, 
it's something you don't grow up with in the hood. Yeah, sure. You know, your mom doesn't go, hey, man, we barbecue some octopus. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You, but, you know, we got the picnic Saturday. Can yeah, you get some octopus? Put some hot sauce on it. So uh, I, it, it just didn't look appealing, and I always thought the suction cups would stick in my mouth. But yeah. can you tell me exactly. which? It doesn't look appealing. Neither <laughs> do. Can Neither you do. Can you tell us which you hate? Which do you hate worse? Gun to your head, you got to eat one of them. Which, which one do you eat? Um, I'm visiting the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Let's not go that extreme. Come on, you gotta eat one. Elizabeth, of these I'm things. coming to join you, honey. <laughs> that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> you gotta eat <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh octopus. What is this? I'm coming to join you. <laughs> for, uh, for, for, uh, if I had a if I had a choice. That's a Sanford and well, Son Red Fox reference. Yeah, by the way, I started watching Sanford and Son reruns lately, <laughs> and I hadn't watched it since I was a kid. I swear to God, I never picked up on this as a kid. If you said to me now, describe Sanford and Son to a person that's never seen it, I go, it's a sitcom about a man that calls his sister-in-law ugly. <laughs> that <laughs> plays more of a plot point than the junkyard than him with the son. I'm like, this is the crux of the entire show. Not about Lamont. Sorry, spit. <laughs> you know, be um, what, what it, uh, honestly, if you had to eat one. I was being very honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I can answer you dishonestly, so okay. let's go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which do you think is more disgusting? Or, or is it a dead dead heat tie? That's it. Like, you can't pick. It, it, it's <sighs> more disgusting. They're both in front of you. You got to eat one for a million bucks. Depends on how it's prepared. Okay. A am I eating the oysters raw? Or are they no, fried? How, or are how they you like... would like them. You can have right? them any way. You, you can have either thing any way you want it. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the briny thing that you explained. Okay, yeah. Uh, and right. the octopus, as I've seen it, open up that thing of crabs and... <laughs> Do taxes and all the other stuff yeah. that he's doing. It makes me feel kind of weird about that. But uh, maybe a fried oyster. Anything okay. fried could mask. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Usually. A something. fried oyster, too, tastes very similar to a fried clam or fr it's like. Are you I, not with clams or mussels either? Um, I, Oreganata, even? What's that? Oregano. You're talking to a hood guy. You know, sure, sure, like, sure, you know, sure. I, I, yeah, yeah. I've made a little bit of money, but I've, you know, my palate stayed in the <laughs> no, hood. Right yeah, what is? <laughs> I don't know what that is either. What is that? <laughs> well, you He's haven't heard of oregano on anything? Huh? He's from Compton. Compton. Clan I'm, from, I'm from Compton. <laughs> <laughs> Compton. Wait, <laughs> what is oregano? Oregano. What is that? It's basically a breadcrumb garlic baked type of situation. Oh, that's what that's. A, it's a top. It's like what they put on like baked clams. Yeah, clams oregano. Don't get you know. No, what? no, but I'm not. I'll come across this couch just, in two just, seconds. Just put clams and oregano. It's it's, it's baked clams. But but even shrimp. Every everything. It's a it's a major. That's I'm actually surprised because that's a major staple in Italian cooking. They're called baked clams though. On every Italian menu, it says baked clams. It never says clams oregano. It does. It does. You, I, I swear to God, go back to Staten Island. <laughs> I've, I've, I've learned something today. Uh, it's it's. Um, so wait, wait, but wait, what was your question? Would he? Would Paul eat clams or oregano? Yeah, right? would I eat? Well, I no, thought, which, I no, because because you said like fried well, oregano really it's delicious and it but, masks. What what is is that a preparation? Oregano or is that a seasoning? <laughs> It's like a preparation. Is, oh, okay. Yeah. And what does that entail again? It's mostly breadcrumb. I think lemon, garlic, and it's just. A, yeah, that's it right there. It's just on the top. Do you oh, this like, smells like masks. Do you like shrimp? Delicious. Do you like All shrimp scampi? The rag. Oh, I love shrimp scampi. Okay, it, it tastes like shrimp scampi except with breading. Oh, then it'd I'm be sold. like if you took fried shrimp and mixed fried shrimp with shrimp scampi flavor. That's kind of what it tastes like. I think that's a pretty good uh, description, right? Because no. the scampi's <laughs> no, it is. Because the scampi's it's, the garlic and the briny. butter, and then the fried is the breading okay. and stuff. I think if you Squeeze you would a little lemon on it, oh, it's so nice. It's yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now I'm getting hungry for some. A baked reason. clam yeah. is clams that. oregano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this is uh, we we go to the phones here because that's we try to get a very funny by people's comments. We try to get a vibe yeah. on. Who's gonna win or lose before we go to? Because we put out a poll at the beginning of this. What? This, yeah. So yeah. people are voting right now. They're voting. Yeah. Oh we, yeah. That's a really funny quote. To eat, this is tough. It's like picking between pennies and roofing nails. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really funny response. That's I'd rather have true. McDonald's for the only for the rest of my life. I love it. Praise. <laughs> The world is my oyster, bitch. Said the octopus as he opened jars and solved complicated math problems. This is like picking shit or shit with. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you called it, dude. I was right. That's the winner. This is like, is, you laughed through it. This is like picking shit or shit with suction cups on. Follow Pedro Carvello at Carvello, capital P, 30672. But let's uh, let's ask your daughter, too. If you had to pick, you like both of these. So oh, what, wow. V, can you pass her a mic real quick? Oh, you don't have any more mics? Hold on. Sal, pass her your mic real quick. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can hear you. So you like both. Yeah. <laughs> if you could you if you had to pick which you thought was worse of the two though which would you pick even though you like both octopus yes. why is that i guess it's like you kind of have to get over it's a weird looking thing yes okay I just ate it because somebody was like, it looks so good and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't want to be rude. Right. And I was like, okay, it's not bad, but it's not something I'm like, I'm going to go to the restaurant and get octopus. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. But do it's you, good. I like it. Do you like fried cal? Do you like fried calamari or no? Because that's too close Wait, to octopus. Wait, calamari, that's the, explain it to me. So calamari this is like squid. a ring. Yeah. Oh, you know what happened? Uh, I'll give you a really quick story. I was in Germany one time with uh, Stetson Sonic. Okay. And we went to this guy's restaurant. I was like, oh, you know, in his German accent, which I can't do. He come to my restaurant. And I sat down, and I was like, oh, man, onion rings. And I grabbed them, <laughs> and I went like this. And, went, nye, nye, and it yeah. wouldn't break apart, and all the breading and everything came off. They're like, what kind of onion ring is this? They're like, oh, no, it's squid or octopus. So you hated this? You oh, hated no, I, I was unpleasantly surprised. Okay. And I was good after that, and I'd never wanted it again here okay. is a tip for you if you ever eat this is a tip for everybody octopus has nine brains yeah that's what i was saying it's right? wild squid if you ever order calamari at a restaurant send it back <laughs> it has to if you do not see tentacles in different shapes that is not squid it is pig what? asshole that is true <laughs> that's true <laughs> That's well, true. That. <laughs> That's true. No, no, no. I have a friend who's a chef. It's true. I have a friend who's a chef, and she said, she said, this is a this is a short. They, like they take pig asshole and they cut it up because it tastes almost exactly the same as calamari, and you definitely can't tell when it's fried. She goes, if you ever go to like, she goes, That's why when you go to like a diner and you get calamari, it's all exactly the same size ring. She goes, That is not calamari. That okay. is the trick. That is it's a real thing. It's real. Well, that's Booty. good to know. Yeah, so you know. All I right. guess I've, I, I have to imagine you just told me that at some point in my life I've eaten cow asshole cooked. <laughs> Only that, 30. And it was good. <laughs> All time low of uh, votes maybe, here 3,200. Maybe. maybe uh, <laughs> oh, man. Jesus. All right. All right, Paul, the way we end this is once we show who won, the winner says to the loser, I still love you. The loser says, I love you back. But before we do that, we want you to plug whatever you want to plug. You know, we want you Socials, to get in. Socials, anything. Oh, I, I, get, I get to, to, to talk about uh, anything. Now I become a salesman. I'm like, hey, yeah, just for nine ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, hey, De La Soul's album is out for streaming. Three Feet High and Rising. Uh, I'll mention the ones I worked on. Three Feet High and Rising. De La Soul's Dead Balloon Mind State. If you see it on your streaming app, please uh, stream it, and I uh, you could purchase it. Um, there's also the, all the other records I've done, the Grave Diggers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah. I know. Or Handsome Boy. Or Handsome which Boy. I, I, which I, I wish I could have done the, the skit on that, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, just next time, man, please. Yeah, yeah. You said, you said he was too busy and too big for me to <laughs> kind of like do that. Like, Are you guys doing a third? And I wasn't paying, so that had a lot <laughs> no. to do with it. Are you doing a third Handsome Boy? Um. I, th I think I, I think I have retired my mustache. Uh, All I, right. you know, I, I, I'm becoming handsome, well, an ugly man. <laughs> That's what happened. Dan the Automator Time has you know huge fan of Dan the Automator. Oh, Love Doctor Octagon, and then but also too. One of my top five bands of all time is Faith No More. I'm a huge Mike Patton fan. Oh, Mike the Patton's fact that great you guys guy. had Mike Patton on the second Handsome Boy, I was like, wow. Yeah, that that, that was all Dan. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Dan because they did Lovage together. Yeah, they did Lovage yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's um What about Rozelle? You ever work with Oh Rozelle. Yeah, we, we had him on the second handsome boy record. Yeah. I haven't seen Rozelle in a while. Yeah. You know, uh yeah, he's super talented, man. If you see him before I do, tell myself what's up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> might, I don't know him. You might run to him on the I street. See him, I'll ask you know? him you to guys had, me. That second one, I remember I, I saw it in the store and I turned it, uh, the C D and I turned it over. 
because this is pre-streaming, and I just started seeing all the guest stars on oh, it. Oh, it's crazy. And I was so excited because yeah. it was like, I'm a big Lord Finesse fan. You had Lord Finesse on it. Yeah, Finesse. And then you had Drez on it, and Drez had not done anything since the second Black Sheep album at that point. Wow, and I, was I didn't like, realize Whoa. that. Well, well, anything that I had... He had not started putting out Black Sheep stuff again. Right. Or yet. And I was like, whoa, he's got Drez on. Like, I, it was like, you guys had some major uh, features on that thing, man. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 how we stay handsome. <laughs> you got to spread the love. <laughs> and it comes back at you. I, I, last thing, I just scored a Bismarcky documentary wow. um, with one of the gentlemen that we talked about from Ego Trip, Sasha Jenkins. Okay. And that should... Uh, I think it's going to the festivals this summer. Oh, and, that's um, awesome. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. But you could follow me at DJ Prince Paul on whatever Twitter, Instagram, and I don't tweet and I don't post anything. But, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody would, you know, likes the numbers, so. <laughs> awesome, Dude, man. thank you for being here. This oh, was, thanks thank for inviting me. For this is great. Here. Yeah, this yeah, is awesome. Two, two nasty dishes. This you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all can give me like one, like, yeah, Paul, ice cream. <laughs> well, that's when you come back. When you come back, we'll do two yeah. delicious dishes. <laughs> All right, here's so the big ending. This is what we call humble pie. When we get the uh, the percentages right now, so drum roll, Pimpy. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. wow. What? Really? I am so surprised. I'm surprised Octopus too. Octopus takes the win 57.7% to 42.3%. Wow. Buddy, I'm coming up on you this season. I, well, you're beating me. <sighs> this is the first season God, you're winning. God. So, third season, he's finally winning. Uh, yeah, this, this, you don't need to <laughs> well, I'll take the shot. Out. I'll take the shot. The, uh, I had it. All right. I still love you, bud. I love you too. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic. I'm